Right. We'll look into that We're one. That one. Hello, the shorter you? one. That's what she show. said. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Chicago Bob's Blues Show. Right, this week's back. special guest, you know who it is, Mike? Um, the legendary Blues Fest headliner this year at Chicago Blues Fest, Tom Holland. Hello. Hey. Hey. All right, let's go home. <laughs> How you been, Tom? Been very well. Very busy, very busy. Very busy. And speaking of very busy, you, you just got back from Europe? I was in Europe. Uh, for uh, I think it was a week. Yeah, and you and and brought us souvenirs. Yes, t-shirts for everybody. T-shirts for everybody. No, Tom has a new CD out. Tom Holland and the Shuffle King: The Lost Sessions. You want to get a close-up of this? Zoom in. Eww. Camera on. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to get that Eww. copy of that. So, Tom, how was Europe? It was fast. It was fast. Fast and I, furious? Fast and furious. Oh, it was I, got off the plane and pretty much worked for the time I was there and no days off, just go, go, go. Wow. No, no time to see any sights or anything? The sights I saw were from the inside of a van. <laughs> <laughs> Without Go. windows. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they know who you are? They do. That's why, that's that's why, why they wouldn't let there. me out. <laughs> so where did you play there? Uh, France, the Netherlands, and Belgium. Belgium. I can't picture the blues going over in Belgium, but... It's funny. Belgium is actually one of the bigger blues markets... Really? ...for... American blues artists to go over there. They wow. love blues over there. Wow. wow. And their waffles. <laughs> and, and, and their fries. It's, you heard of chicken and yeah. waffles, this is blues and waffles. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got back from that, and you've still been busy here. Oh, yeah. You just yep. did Chicago Blues Fest. Yeah, you've been playing the... every damn club in the city. Yep. Thankfully, they all still like me. They all still remember <laughs> who you are. <laughs> And you got a new CD out. You want to explain the CD a little bit? Sure, sure. That was, uh, it's called The Lost Sessions I because I had, I was, for this European run, I, you know, I had been to the, most of the places that I was playing. I had already been there a couple times since my last CD was out, so they all had it. So I wanted to make sure I had some Something new product. Fresh. And I had remembered that I had, done a session for a friend of mine who was going to the art institute for sound engineering and he get you know he called me and was like hey i've got six hours of free studio time if you could do it and you know it's for my class and then once i'm done you get the masters and you can do whatever you want with it so you know being a being a musician you don't ever you don't you don't pass up free studio time whether you have you stuff ready or not. You don't pass up free nothing. No, no, exactly. So, I had, I mean the the stuff on the CD, new CD. It's I think it was recorded in 2016. So I mean it's three years old. But do we? You want to give him a plug? He did a lot of work. Yeah, uh, Darren J. Follis. He. Thank you, Darren. Yes, thank you very much. And so it, it was the lost sessions because when I was like, oh, wait, I remember that I had the masters, the masters, and then I couldn't find them. Uh oh. <laughs> so it was truly lost. Yeah. So, you know, I, he, he, cause he gave me a, a hard copy of it. And then, you know, he had also sent me, he had drop boxed the set, the studio stuff. And for whatever reason, I couldn't find the, the stuff on Dropbox. You know, I was going through my Dropbox, couldn't find it. And so I sent him an email and I was like, hey man, can you Dropbox me the master again for the stuff I did? And not 10 minutes after I had emailed him, I was cleaning up, you know, I was cleaning in my office and found the master. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So See, that's not like my house. My, no. old, my old lady would have went, I threw it away, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's why it, if it were any, anywhere else in the house, it probably would have been. <laughs> Speaking of the house, you grew up on the south side of Chicago, Beverly area. I did, I did. And what was that like? I, you know, it was, it was nice. You know, I spent most of my teenage years in my bedroom uh, playing your guitar, playing my guitar. Yeah, really. Everyone else was out softball. And yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, trouble. And I was locked in my room because I knew when I was real young, that's what I wanted to do. Right. And, you know, so the joys of being hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike Gibb used to talk really highly of you back in the old Yeah, days. yeah. Uh, you sat in with him on some, some of the gigs. Yeah, the yeah. You Did know. you do the old tip-on-end stuff? You know, I honestly... It was right around that same time when I came around, and I honestly I don't remember. <laughs> I prob I probably did, but you know it's it's been a while. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw you. We were playing a gig up in the North Side, and uh, I was with Mike, and you had come in. I can't even remember the club. Um, anyways, Mike had asked you if you wanted to get up and stuff, yeah, and yeah. then you you left. And I went over and I said, what'd you do to piss that guy off? <laughs> and he just said, nothing. He's got to, he had to go somewhere. He just stopped by to say hello. Yeah. And I go, oh, who is that? And he goes, that's Tom Holland. Yeah. You know? So that was the first time I ever saw you. Gotcha. So anyways, growing up in, in Beverly, um, so how did you get started playing blues? You know, you just didn't uh, come you Tom know, Holland overnight. No, no, no. Um, you know, my dad had a big record collection. And, you know, being a kid, you know, it's, you know, the attention span of a 10, 11 year old was, you know, six months of, I want to play guitar, I want to play guitar, I need a guitar, I want a guitar, I want a guitar, I want a guitar. So they get me a guitar. And, you know, for three months, I just kind of look at it and try and play it and then put it down, put it, you know, under the bed it goes. And I think it was right around. When I started high school, I was playing baseball and I broke my index finger. Oh. And which hand? Uh, I think it was the right. left hand. So while I was, you know, recovering, you know, I had a little, you know, a little splint or whatever on my finger. And after I got done, um, you know, with all, you know, after it had healed, I was, you know, while I was while it was healing, I was like, "Oh, maybe I should try that guitar thing again." <laughs> and you know, and so when I try, you know, so when I decide, you know, when I figured, okay, well, let's give this guitar thing an, another go. I didn't realize, you know, that you know, being left-handed, you know, I just, you know, they bought a right-handed guitar, and so I All would right. just flip it over, and I didn't realize. You know, because at first well, I was, you know, with the bass strings closest to my feet, you know, I'd try and bend those strings. And it was like, man, if this is how this is going to go, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so then then I, you know, then somebody had, you know, said to me, well, you know. Restring it. Restring it for, you know, left-handed. And I, you know, I didn't, you know, I had no idea about any of that. So that's what I, you know, I, you know, I had this acoustic guitar, just restrung it and started taking lessons for maybe about a year or so. And after about a year, the guy I was taking lessons from was like, you know, he was like, well, you have the basics, but you keep bringing in stuff that you want to learn and you pretty much already know it. You know, because I had been hearing it since I was, you know, little a little kid. You know, because my dad was big into blues and jazz and R and B, so I had, you know, it was already, you know, ingrained in my head. In my head. You know, and it's like when I, I I saw Eddie Van Halen on MTV and said, "That's what I want to do." Really? And when I when I started, you know, when I got serious about playing guitar. I realized real fast that my fingers were never going to move that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not the music I wanted to play. <laughs> so. So how old are you? 
41. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. You're a lot younger than I thought you were. Oh, yeah. Oh. So as I was thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, left-handed, he's just starting out. What would he, he be Hendrix. <laughs> you know, I no, guess not. Hendrix is already yeah. dead. <laughs> but So anyways, moving on from that, you started coming up in the blues, and you became a legend in your own in your own mind and our mind. <laughs> um, as the backup and the brains and the... Uh, the beauty. The, all right, beauty. <laughs> the band leader of the James Cotton Band. How does that, how does, how do you just fall into that? That's not... It was, um, I was actually on a little vaca mini vacation with my wife when Cotton's people called. We were actually in New York on Halloween and we're it was like 10 o'clock in the morning something like that and you know we were in a coffee shop in in Manhattan getting coffee and the phone rings and normally you know if I don't recognize the number I'm I don't answer it I mean that's how it's always right. been and you know so but I didn't recognize the number, but I answered it anyways. And, you know, it was Cotton's manager at the time, and he was like, uh, we got your name from, you know, we need a guitar player to go out on the road for three weeks to the West Coast, and you're the guy everybody keeps telling us that we need to call. There you go. And or did they find your number in the yellow pages? Yeah, they, that, that could have happened too. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you know, so I didn't even, you know, didn't really think about it. I was just like, oh, I'm in. You know, I didn't ask how much the gig was paying. You know, I was just like, I'm in. When do we leave? <laughs> and so it's Halloween. And we were, and he's like, oh, we'll, we'll be leaving. You know, we were driving from Chicago to San Francisco. So I think we left on, he, he was like, uh, we'll probably leave around midnight on the 2nd <laughs> of November. Okay, cool. We got back from our little mini vacation in New York, November 2nd at like noon. So I had 12 hours to do a couple loads of laundry, throw it in a suitcase, and jump in a van with a bunch of guys that I have <laughs> never met. <laughs> well, I mean, I I knew the guys in the band. But, you know, didn't know them, you know, well enough to, you know, outside of seeing them and, hey, how you doing type of thing. And, you know, so we ended up, you know, leaving at midnight that night. And, you know, so we drove, you know, I think it was three days, you know, from Chicago to, you know, and it was it was one of those, you know, going through the mountains uh, in Colorado is never fun in November. No. no. <laughs> that was one of those where, I mean, you know, by that time I had been on the road with, with Primer and with Eddie Clearwater, so, I was, you know, I was a seasoned road dog, you know, but, you know, when I was playing with Eddie Clearwater, we did a couple West Coast runs where, you know, we drove from Chicago out to the West Coast, but it was always in the summer. Right, right. You know, Going, you know, driving through the mountains in the summer is not, you know, it's not really that bad unless you're going to the tip top of a mountain and most highway, you know, 80, most, does, 80 doesn't do that. Right. So, you know, so we had, so we had to go through the mountains in November and that was, that was a little nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been through Flagstaff in the middle of winter and finally got stuck and oh, yeah. had to wait it out. But speaking of roadworthy, you have been, you were like on the road constantly. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, and when Cotton, when Cotton passed away, when I, when I, you know, when he passed away, I got off the road for a little while. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long enough to do laundry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to, to do more than one load of laundry. <laughs> Watch them new clothes I've been buying. That's right. Yeah. You so. know, but I, I had gotten off the road for maybe, you know, maybe maybe six months or a year. You know, I've just, you know, because 
by that point, I, you know, I had been on the road with Cotton for 12 years, so I was, you know, I didn't realize it until I got off the road how how burned out I was. Right. <laughs> you know, and so it was nice to be home, you know, wow. for a while. But, you know, once the, uh, you know, once you're home for a while and you're used to 12 years of, Road calling. Being gone, you know, being on the road, you know, after about a year or so, it was, you know, starting to get the itch again. And then, you know, people started calling and back to the road I went. How, how's the wife and family with that? You know, they're used to it. You know, I mean, it's definitely not easy. Right. You know, because, I mean, my son just turned 13 in May. And, you know, I've been... Gone. gone for, you know, a good amount of that time, you know, mostly summers, <coughs> yeah, you know. I, I know I know what that's like because I, I worked nights and I drove a truck for a living, and then I was on the road for a week at a time. So it's like you miss so much oh, yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, I'm actually glad that's over, that part of my life's over, but now it's like... Now I got to make up time. Oh yeah, doing yeah. All the things that I yeah, couldn't do. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. But, and the family—they're all—they all grew up, and I like I missed. I made one of my son's football games. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I mean, and and that was you know, and that was the, you know, and that's still one of the things now. I mean, you know, I'm getting back out on the road a lot more nowadays again. But I mean, even just being, you know, playing around Chicago or the Midwest. You know, I'm working four or five nights a week. Right. So, I mean, it's almost like I'm gone because I'm not at home for, you know, 70% of the week. Right, right. You know, it's like I'm home during the day, but... They're in school. He's in school, you know, and so, you know, so, I mean, it's kind of like I'm still on the road. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking on the road... We have another guest in in the studio. It's my oldest boy. <laughs> wow. T man, Terrence Williams. Hello, everyone. <laughs> One of the baddest drummers you'll ever run across. Terrible. Drummer from Mississippi Heat. <laughs> uh, he's a drummer with the Home Wreckers, and he's a drummer with uh, his pri- uh, ex- impressions. Imp- ex- impressions. Impressions. Expressions. Expressions. Band. Yeah. Randy Johnson and Expressions Band. Mr. Terrence Williams. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Yes, Every sir. Sunday, it's a pleasure. Well, I'm, not, I'm all mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you up to? Um, Just glad to be here. Um, not really doing a whole lot. Uh, maybe about to travel a little more with Mississippi Heat and uh, see this wonderful country. Cool. Cool. It's a good way to look at it. <laughs> Yes. John. So you you have an endorsement from Delaney Guitars. I do. And Quilter amps. Quilter amplifiers. Yes. How do, how, do, how do how do they how do they how does that happen? Um, you know, with well, you don't the... just take your American Express card. You know who I am. <laughs> no, I tried that, and then I ended up paying triple. <laughs> you don't look like Carl Malden no. to me. <laughs> 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 well, like with uh, Delaney. I had been playing St. Blues guitars, and the the guy that was my guy, you know, everybody's got a guy. Yep. And T <laughs> Man's my guy. <laughs> you got any questions? See T Man. That's right. <laughs> so, um, the guy that I was dealing with at St. Blues had left the company and he had, you know, taken very good care of me. And when he left, you know, before, before he left, I had run into Mike Delaney. I don't remember where, but, you know, we had talked and we were, you know, and he was always like, you know, Hey, if, you know, if you ever want to switch up, you know, I'll make you whatever you want. And so I was, you know, that was always in the back of my head. It was not long after the guy that I was 
you know, that was helping me out at St. Blue's after he left, you know, that word had gotten out that he had left St. Blue's, you know, he had... Did he go to Delaney? No, no, he I, he got out of the guitar business. Okay. And somehow or another, it got back to Mike Delaney that I was, you know, that the, that the guy at St. Blue's that had taken such good care of me was, not you know, there. was not there anymore. And, you know, Mike said to me, he was like, you know, so he called me. He's like, hey, man, the offer's still open. And I was like, well, you know, I have, <laughs> I've had this idea in my head since I was, you know, 14, 15 years old, you know, and I, you know, and I, and it was like, it was like a jazz master body. You know, I knew it was, I knew I wanted a jazz master body and the St. Blue stuff that I had, most of it was like telly, telly right. bridges and stuff like that. So that's what I was used to. And I was like, hey, can you do a, like a jazz master body with telly guts? That's what like, she said. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he was like, oh, of course. Yeah, that's not a problem. And so we started talking. And so the first one, uh, the first one he did was a seafoam green because I always wanted a seafoam green guitar. And so he he did one of those in seafoam green and you know so then I you know got it and I started taking it out on the road with cotton and people started you know calling him hey man I saw James Cotton and his guitar player was playing looked like <laughs> one of yours what is it and can I get one Really so, you know, he was getting a lot of interest from the, you know, from people, from guitar players that had seen me playing with, with Cotton. So he, you know, he called me and he's like, hey, so I've got a lot of interest from guitar players. He's like, well, first off, I just want to say thank you for <laughs> playing my guitars out there. He's like, he's like, we're getting a lot of feedback. And would you be opposed to making this your signature model? And, you know, and I would sell it, you know, and, you know. We and, can all buy a, a signature series? Yeah. Does it say Tom Holland on it? No, I don't think so. But I could, I could, I could put my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be I cool. hate jazz master bodies, yeah. but <laughs> I'd like to have one for my wall. And so... You know, because he was like, I'm getting a lot, and you know, and he, you know, he made a bunch of them, you know, and you know, sold them as the Tom Holland Shuffle King model. So I mean, there's there's a handful of them floating out there, cool. you know, and they make them right handed as well. So well, you can tell Mike Delaney, and I'm ready to switch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see me every Sunday playing it. <laughs> that's right. And so you know, that's how the whole thing with Delaney started you know it was you know he built me the one and it just kind of snowballed from there cool and you know and it's how much same, input do you have on the guitars oh I mean it's it's all my you know I mean honestly spec wise I don't know anything about radiuses or string spacing if it's a fender neck or a Gibson neck I I, I know how to Put the cord in the hole <laughs> and work the volume knob. <laughs> now that's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. So that leads us now to the quilter amps, because like I never heard of a quilter amp until you sat in with us yeah. at our shows, yeah. and you walked in with this little thing. It looked like you took it out of the dashboard of your car, <laughs> and I'm thinking, what is he going to do with that? <laughs> And you were always amazing anyways, what you would do with a small amplifier. Yeah, yeah. But when you came in with that first quilter, I was like, holy Christ. And then I went and stood at the back of the room, and it's like this big-ass sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. And, well, that was um, when I recorded my last record, uh, No Fluff, Just the Stuff. I recorded it at Felix Reyes's studio mm -hmm. out in Oak Park. And, you know, I've known Felix since he, you know, 
when I was poor, when I was working with Eddie Clearwater, he he moved to Chicago from Atlanta. And a mutual friend of ours at the time introduced us. And you know, we've known we I got him a gig playing bass with Eddie for a bunch of months when he first moved to town. And you know, we've always we've you know, when he was building his studio, I was one of the guinea pigs that, you know, <laughs> We go in there and you know record some stuff, you know, so he could you know learn how to use all of his equipment and everything. And so when I did that record, you know, I, you know, I had called him and he was like, "Yeah, man, come on, you know, you can, you know, you're always welcome to record at my place." So the first, the first day of recording, I got to his house, you know, a couple hours before we started because you know. His, in his studio, he's got a room full of vintage amps, you know, and, you know, I had my, you know, Fender Blues DeVille or whatever it was. I think it was a DeVille. But so I brought that with and, you know, and, you know, and I was like, OK, well, I'll either use mine or use one of his old supers or twins or whatever. And. Before I even got to go look in the amp room, he's like, try this little thing. Try this amp out. <laughs> and I looked at it, kind of, you know, you know, did the old tilted my head, looked at it funny, scra scratched my head. Sorry, Mike. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I'm just looking at it going, I don't know. And then he's like, oh, it's solid state. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> You know, and he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you you should really try this. He's like, of all people, you know I'm a snob about, you know, tone. And he goes, just try this amp. Just They're not solid state? No, they are. Oh, they are. Right. Yeah. And, you know, because all the solid state amps I had ever played were, Crap. were horrible. So I had, you know, so I sat with it for like 45 minutes. And you know, I mean, it, the one he had was the Micro Pro, which was the first one that they put out. You know, and it was a little eight-inch speaker, and it was two hundred watts, <laughs> and had all these bells and whistles. And I'm like, man, I all I need is bass, mid, and treble, and a volume. I'm good. With, I don't need all this other crap. And he's like. Just sit with it and just play with it, and I think you'll be surprised. That's what she said. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I sat there and, you know, played with it for, you know, an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, you know, and twisting knobs here, here and there. And by the end of that time, I was like, well, I, th I, th I think we need to mic this and let's just use it. And I ended up using it on the record, you know, for the whole record. Right. And, and I was like, I had never heard of them before. And I was like, where did you get this? <laughs> where did you get this magical box? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he was like, oh, it's this, you know, he's like, you know, um, you know, when you like go into clubs and like all the loudspeakers are QSC. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, sure. You know, I, I didn't know, you know, he's like, the guy that, that did, you know, that does all the QSC stuff, this is his, you know, this is his foray into the amplifier world. So, you know, he's like, I can get you, he's like, I'll get you in touch with them. And so I, you know, he got me in touch with them and I was, and I was like, well, you know, you know, I, first thing I said, I said, I'm not looking for anything for free. I'm like, but I just recorded my new record with one of your amplifiers, you know. And I was like, I was like, I'd like to see what else you guys can do. And they were like, you know, they're like, well, we've got a new line coming out next year for the uh, at the NAM show. And they're like, we need people to test them. I'm like, okay. It's like, we're going to send you one and you're going to be a beta tester. I said, okay. <laughs> Not a problem. 
So I end. That's how I ended up getting endorsed with them. Was I was beta testing their new line, and they sent me the the little one that I brought out. And when when I had when I got when I brought it out to your gig, mm -hmm. I had had it for maybe a month at that, if that, you know. So I was still trying to you know, and that one that line didn't have all the bells and whistles like the you know. I mean, it was. It was more like what I'm used to. Right. And so, you know, but when I came, when I brought the little, you know, the first one I had was the little eight-inch one. And, you know, after 20-something years of playing open back, you know, amplifiers, you know, I couldn't, you know, it's like it was louder than all get out. It sounded really good, but I just couldn't, I couldn't work with it, you know, it because it didn't have an open back. <laughs> so, you know... Better better than a bad back. This is true. And so, you know, I... You know, since I was a beta tester, I took it seriously, and I told them everything I loved about the amp. I told them everything I hated about the amp. <laughs> and then I was like, can you send me the 210 model? Because that's got an open back, and that's what I'm used to. And so they're like, yeah, send us, you know, so I sent the, the eight inch one back. They sent the 210 out and that I use, I still use that today, wow. you know? And so, but yeah, I mean, that's how that all snowballed. It was, you know, I took their, you know, I was, you know, I, I was basically their Chicago guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they based out of? Uh, Costa Mesa, California. All right, it's a good excuse to go out there. Huh? Oh yeah, well I've I've done a bunch of gigs over the years out in L.A. and every time I go out there, I always I always go out a few days early so I can go out to their to the factory there. Cool, cool. So if they need more testers, I'm available. I hear you. John, the Spot Studios That's available, right. and they should make a base model. Oh yeah, I could try that out. They do. They 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 just started making a Are they bass model. Drums yet? Not yet. They should make drums for team Boy, I would, love I would it. definitely <laughs> be a test model. In, inflatable yes. inflatable <laughs> drums. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Marketable. And you could go you in the pool with it too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's, that's what you need when you go on a cruise gig. There you oh go. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. yeah strap on. <laughs> Drum have you water done, wings. Have you done the cruise stuff yet? I have not. I'm actually going to be going on the legendary blues cruise in October with uh, Mike Zito. Okay. So he's... Keep me informed how that goes, because yeah, I've, I've yeah. heard good reviews and bad reviews. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's... Down in the hole. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> I hope I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a big enough star. You haven't made the second one. Nah, flight. you know. One day, one day. <laughs> so we're in the studio, the Spot Studio in Schneider, Indiana. John Huber. Hey. hey. Zach back there. He's the in intern. Just say hey. Hi. <laughs> Mike Vetramilla. He plays bass. I try. That's right. You play guitar. I, I play do. guitar. The world famous T Man is in the in 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 the house. We should. He plays timpani. We should do something. We should do something live. Sounds great. Better than dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do something live. Right. We'll be right back. Before we start this. This this song you might want to explain this new newest guitar. Yes, to, this to, is to the audience. This is the for every kid that wants a Tom Holland special. Yes, this is the Windy City Special Tailhook model from Gravel Hill Guitars out of Pennsylvania. Chris Stone is the luthier. Makes a wonderful, wonderful instrument. <laughs> see in just a few seconds how good it sounds.
Actually, I recorded on my first record back in nineteen out six. <laughs> two, I think I think it was I think I recorded it in two thousand two, and I mean it had been it, I probably wrote it in the late nineties. Really, and that's actually one of the songs on the new record because. When I when I went and did the, the session, you sessions. know, when I did the lost sessions, you know, he wanted a bunch of original, you know, he wanted a couple of originals, and I was like, well, you didn't really give me a chance to, and I don't want to record stuff that I just recorded off my last record, so I was like, well, it's been almost fifteen years since the first record. Yeah, it's been out of print for you know a long time, so and I was like. 
well, we'll just revisit a bunch of that stuff from that <laughs> first record. And so I just re-recorded it. Cool, cool. And that seems like, you know, like last year to me. So it's like... Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. I remember when we were trying to get guest hosts for the All-Star Jam and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody goes, hey, why don't you get Tom Holland? I go, I don't know Tom Holland. <laughs> Why would he even talk to me, <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden, one day I get a, a message from you. Hey, I could do your jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got he, Tom Holland. Uh, people were asking you get Tom Holland, and people were going telling me, how come you haven't been out to see Bob yet? <laughs> and I, I was like, well, because Bob hasn't asked me to come out yet, and I don't really know Bob that well. And I know, rejection you know, is a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> I tell, well, and, and enough people were like, no, 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 he's got a really good thing going on out there. You should, you should, you know, even if you don't know him, just the worst he can say is no. No, I had heard of you, and yeah. I have known of you, and I'm thinking, like, he would, why would he even talk to me? <laughs> it's like that in high school when you see that hot babe, uh -huh. you know, and you're like, damn, I want to go out with her. You know, I, I am not a hot babe, but thank you. <laughs> There's a song for you. <laughs> well, why don't we slow it down a little bit and do another one off of this new old record? <laughs>
have been reapplied. Yes, that's what she said. <laughs> but if she's talking like this, run the other way. Right, because she <laughs> has what you have. Do you go to Europe and do that stuff? They look strange at you when you do that kind of stuff. Sometimes. <clears throat> Especially when I speak Pakistani. <laughs> <laughs> Where I come from, it is very... I am not telling you what I am telling you, but I am telling you. <laughs> Man of many talents. Yes, that is what she said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they call a cow in France, don't you? Or what the cow says in France, it says Le Mou. Sounds like a French car, Le Mou. Mm -hmm. Like some kind of fake butter. <laughs> <Le Mou>. <laughs> <laughs> Margarine. So tell me when we're alive. You know, I dated a girl named Roger. Continuously. Continuously. That was oh, good. That was goodness. fun. Thank you, Tom. Thank I you, Tom. enjoyed that. It's yes. Yes. Tom, you're the best. Another in-studio guest. That's correct. Thanks wow. So. He got it right. All right. I'll screw it Talk up next that time. Way. We got to put that on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Holland, y'all. So what did you think, Zach, the first time? I thought it was pretty cool. Pretty cool, huh? You gonna start studying your blues now? I, I guess. You should buy one of his CDs. Because <laughs> we happen to have one. Yeah, forty nine ninety five. Any car, any color. That's right. Anyways, thank you, T Man. Oh, thank you for having me. No. Um, before we go, we have some other things we want to talk to you about. Uh oh. It's the money situation. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just you were just one of the headliners at Blues Fest. Yes, yes, I was the headliner for Sunday at the Park Grill stage, which was you had to flip hamburgers. No, almost. <laughs> they put them on the grill, and although I have done uh, some corporate gigs at the Billy Goat, where uh oh, <laughs> where where the running joke was, oh, we're, we're working for cheeseburgers. <laughs> don't take <laughs> whatever you do. Don't take Andy to the Billy Goat. <laughs> Chicken sandwich. <laughs> How many stages are there at Blues Fest this year? Do you know? Uh, I think there was five. Wow. What's the main stage now? Um, it's the Pritzker Pavilion. Okay, somebody says that's like inside of the Bean or something. It's right next to the Bean. Okay. I don't get it. Yeah. I'm old. Well, it's the, let's see. There was the crossroads. The crossroads. The main stage. Front porch, then there was a Mississippi stage. I think that was the Mississippi Juke Joint stage, and then the Park Grill stage. So there were five. But Rosa's Lounge had a tent 
Yeah. Right good. next to the bean. That's right. So I think this year, Rose's was the unofficial stage. Okay. And last year, the Park Grill stage was added on like three weeks before the festival. Because they knew you would be there next year. Well, I guess. <laughs> I, I, can, I can only assume. <laughs> Build this stage because we're going to get Tom Holland here next, right. <laughs> next year. Build it, they will come. They will come. That's right, and they did. Good, good. You had some questions for him? And well, we, we, I, I enjoyed uh, the performance. I was there for the entire performance, and uh, you really had... Speak the, into the mic, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Uh, and so uh, had the crowd going for sure. Um, and I was there with my iPhone camera, and I got footage of the entire show. Ooh. So I went ahead and uh, edited down uh, individual songs, and I'd like to play one of those for you right now. All right. I want to see this. Can yes. we see this now? Yeah. Here we go. Close on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Holland and the Shuffle King.
phenomenal show. That, that was good. That was good. <laughs> That's what, what she said. Great stage <laughs> presence. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. So we had good weather. There was uh, it was uh, supposed to rain. Yeah, it was, um, and yet it didn't. Well, it was funny because that afternoon when I was coming down to Grant or to the. The Millennium festival, Park. Millennium Park. Yeah, I'm still. I still call it Grand, Grand Park. Park. Me too. You know? <laughs> but when I left my house, because I live um, up near Evanston, so I was further north, and it was it was coming down pretty good when I left my house. But I got about halfway to down to downtown, and it stopped, and so I was, you know. I was, had the wipers going, and it was. I was just going. Oh, it's going to rain all afternoon, and I got. I got to about Lasalle Street, the uh, Lasalle and North, you know, North Avenue Beach North area. Avenue Beach. I got to like North Avenue Beach, and the rain stopped, and then it was just really foggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was foggy, uh, and I drove through some rain coming from Indiana, but. Uh, it was all cleared up by the time I got there. Yeah, and you know, and it didn't rain the whole rest of the afternoon. So, in Indiana, rain is actually better because there's no smog in the rain, and it cleans your car and dries automatically. And and there's and there's no taxes. Right, no taxes. <laughs> or, they're, they're at least lower than Chicago. There's, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me on that subject, them rat bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the newest one? Which they, is what? They want to tax electric cars. Oh, I didn't hear that one. Because they're not getting the gas tax from the electric yeah, cars. So now they want to tax that. So they had it like a, they're going to estimate your miles if you don't keep track of them. And they were figuring it was like going to be like. Um, I just won't get an electric car. <laughs> Thirty cents a mile or so. It actually comes up more. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I know they're they're doing uh, they're they're bad, raising the bastards. gas tax too. So I'm going to bring back the steam car. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> and burn them all. <laughs> then they'll tax the wood. No, they want to put up a they want to put up a, a fence on the border. We're going to put one up on the border, Indiana, with the little Gestapo guy. <laughs> Let me see your papers. <laughs> I'm just coming to buy fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and wait, 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 you go back to the other side. <laughs> yeah. John, you had more questions? Well, I have uh, one more video that I'd like to show you guys. Oh, I want to see yeah. this. Oh, let's oh, see yeah. it. First one was really good. I know the second one's got to be better. Here we go. All right, let's uh, swing a little bit. Get your count, baby. Thank you. 
Tom Holland's good. He owes me some money, though. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> me, Try and get that money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's been a pleasure. We had a lot of fun. You, people can see you this Sunday at um, the Poor House Bar and Grill in uh, DeMott, Indiana. See, they're calling already. Um, Tom will be there from 6 to 10 hosting the All Star Blues Jam. Yeah, it's going to be a John, lot you're going to be there? We'll see. We'll see. Mike's always there. T-Man's always there, but he won't be there this Sunday. He has a gig. Who do we have playing We drums? have uh, uh, Chris Alexander, the oh, mighty the Chris, Alexander. Chris Alexander. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Phenomenal drummer. They're, not, they're all phenomenal drummers. Yes. We don't get crappy drummers. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Gibb taught me one thing. Surround yourself with the best possible players, and you'll shine like crazy. That's true. <laughs> Mike the sun. Boy, I was shining just a little while ago playing up there. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> thank you. It. Thank you. You're T-Man, best, Mike. thank you for coming out. Gee, it's thank always you for a having pleasure. me. Come out more often. Yeah. We'll do. Bring Mississippi Heat with you. Oh, we my should, pleasure. We should do a podcast with Mississippi Heat. I'm up for it. Can you arrange that? I'm going to work on it. Okay, sounds good. Yes. And then we can have Tom Holland host it. <laughs> no, no reply. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quiet as well. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, it's brought to you by the Spot Studio, Primo Auto Body, T Man's Drum Kits, Inflatable Drum Kits, <laughs> Inflatable Drum Kits, <laughs> Tom Holland, Delaney Guitars, yeah. and uh, Quilter. Quilter, Quilter Amps. amps. Yes. See you all next week. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Good evening.
for Dave Sims. Thank you. 